Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. So previously I've shown how to create an option selector for when an audio signal needs to take a specific path out of many. So this is the setup in case you haven't seen it. I can put card on the screen so you can watch the video if you haven't seen it. So in here I have fruity mutes and an audio signal is gonna go through each of them and these fruity mutes kind of function as gates. So a single one will let the audio go through at a time and that is determined by the selector knob and the formulas in these formula controllers. So each one has kind of a specific value or a range of values so that when this knob value will hit a specific target, you can see that the output will become one. But what if we wanted to make a selector for parameter paths instead? So for example, an option selector for formula controllers, like what if I wanted to select between a specific formula using like a knob on the surface. So I have this example here and this is like something that people would probably first think of when they would try to make something like this, but it's not gonna work in all situations and I'm gonna explain why in a moment. But the idea here is that I want to control the mod X knob of the citrus based on what I've selected here. So very similar to the audio selector thing, but then in here, in each formula controller, I'm gonna apply a different kind of formula. So I have this peak controller where I'm outputting a saw wave and that is connected to the B parameter of all of these formula controllers. And then I have this case statement that if this option is selected, I'm gonna apply a specific kind of a formula or a function to whatever is coming out of this peak controller. So in the first option, I'm just outputting the saw as is. In the second option, I'm putting it through a sine function. In my third option, I'm doing a round function, which will transform it into a square. And then in the final option, I have this tension function. So I'm just making this random shape. Like it doesn't really matter what the shapes are right now. I just want to demonstrate that they're all different and I want to select in between like which one I want to use. So in this setup, this will actually work just fine. Like by just connecting all of the formula controllers to the same input parameter of Citrus. Here we can see that if the first option is selected, this will output a saw wave. And when I go into the Citrus, we can see that the parameter X is doing a saw motion. And the same thing if I switch to the second option, third option is doing a square and the final option is that weird random shape. <laughs> so this is because the output is constantly changing. So this will prioritize whatever output is like currently changing, like something is happening inside of it. And we can even see here that there's like this little arrow animation, which kind of signals that there's data going through it. If I change it to option two, we can now see that the option two path is moving. And it's just the same for option three and option four. But what if we wanted to return a static value? It says won't work, but it, it's supposed to say, <laughs> I'm just gonna change it. Yeah, that works. But this one, this one is not gonna work. So in here, I've determined a static return value in my case function. So the first option, I want the mod X knob to go to 0 0.25. Then in my second option, I want it to go to 0 0.5. In the third option, I want it to go to 0 0.9. And in the final option, I want it to go to one. But now when I move my knob, like as you can see, I'm at option one. It is supposed to return 0 0.25. And it is doing that, like in here, you can see that this formula controller is outputting 0 0.25, but this is still at zero. Then when I move it forward, it's gonna output 0 0.5. So now it's the correct output. But what if I go backwards? Well, now it's all of a sudden zero again. So what what is happening here? So this is because if the if the return value is a static value, there's actually no way to choose which one of these formula controllers is gonna be prioritized. Like 
all of these are outputting something currently. So even if the output is zero, that's still an output. So like we can like if I move this knob, I'm not going to be able to tell which one of these formula controllers is actually the first one to arrive into this input. So what can we do about this? So the first method is an adder method. So here I also have four formula controllers for each option, but then I'm adding them together with these additional formula controllers. So here at the end, I'll only have one formula controller going into this input. So there's like not multiple ones trying to output something in there at once. And in here, in the first four formula controllers, everything works as it's supposed to in the sense that when the knob is at the correct position, only one of these formula controllers is outputting whatever value I want to output into the mod X. So what's gonna happen in the adders is that when I'm doing a sum, the only thing that'll get through is always going to be the option that is selected because it's always going to be adding something with zero. And now I have the option four selected, by the way. So now we're going to go into this other adder. So in here, I've connected the outputs of these two first adders. So in this one, we're outputting option four because option four is selected and we're just trying to add zero onto that. So that basically just means that it has no effect. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter that this is zero because we're doing addition. But then I also have another method which only involves one formula controller. So in here, it works exactly the same way. So how could I make it so that it's only one formula controller? So in this method, I've basically just crammed all the addition inside of a single instance of a formula controller. When it comes to readability, this is a little bit sketchy looking, <laughs> like it's it's a very long formula, but it'll, it'll save you space from the map side because you only need to use a single formula controller. So in here, I basically just have all the same formulas that I previously had divided into like their own instances of the formula controller. And I've also put them in parentheses to make sure that there's no weirdness when it comes to the order of operations. So it'll always calculate whatever is inside of these brackets first and then do the addition. So yeah, this is the first option, the one that is supposed to just return one if it's selected and this is the second option which is supposed to be the sign shape and these are the wrong way around so now it's the right way around okay so this is the second option like this entire thing which is the sine wave and then the next one is the slow saw it's this part over here and then in here we have the final option which is the square or the pulse so in here like it's the same thing happening again so Anything that is not selected is always returning zero. So let's say we have the last option selected. This is gonna be zero plus zero plus zero plus, just trying to deal with this formula. <laughs> okay, so zero plus zero plus zero plus, finally this one, because this, this will be returning the function. I hope it helps you out in your projects and like this video if you thought it was interesting and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more patcher formula controller tutorial stuff. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.